This is the point to me. My, my, I don't put the loan on my spreadsheet. I want to know, is it a good deal if I paid all cash first? Because leverage is always going to make a deal better. Exactly your point. But I don't want to use leverage to make a deal that's kind of half-assed. Okay. If I'm going to take the risk of leverage, I want it to take a deal that's already good and make it stupendous. And I think a lot of people go to a leverage spreadsheet right off the bat and never really bother to think, hey, is this really a deal? And, you know, we went here and we were saying, wow, I'm going to double, or if I'm going to be close to double, that's a deal. So if I decide to use leverage, it's going to be a smoking deal. But how do you know if you've got the debt numbers in the picture from the beginning? It, rate, it may only be a deal that goes from 600 to 800,000. Um, and, you know, if you want to buy that with leverage, then basically you're using the leverage to make that deal good. I'd rather wait on one with a little more juice in it. I and mean, that's just a, that's my personal preference. It doesn't make me right or, or whatever, but that, I. Yeah, I think that goes for passive investors too. When you look at people's performers, make sure you're not looking at a levered IRR right. or a levered return. You're right. looking at cash on cash. And then if it levers up, what the difference it's, is. And I've been teaching the same thing for years. Same thing in, you know, teaching people who own apartments and people who own rental houses. They go straight to the spreadsheet with leverage. And then I take out the leverage and I'm like, this house is like a seven cap. Like, why do you even want to own this? You know, you're going to use the leverage to make it make 12. And why don't you find a house that makes 10 or 11 and then use leverage if you feel like it. And then you'll make a, a, a return worthy of the risk of having to make that payment every month. But anyway, so that was that was the point of all that. We're going to move on and talk to Boots on the ground, because uh, there's there's been a lot of discussion on the calls and everything. A lot of people uh, talking about this, um, and I did this on the call the other night. But I, I think the easiest way for me to explain how I learned all this, you know, the usual hard way. Um, when I bought Hinesville, Hinesville came with Terry. She was already there. She actually used to own Hinesville. She's been running that thing off and on for 20 years. She was very good. She knew exactly what to do. The, the current owner was not allowing her to do it, not giving her any money. A bunch of stuff didn't work. Um, so anyway, I was able to hire her uh, in conjunction with ESS, and she started running the place for me, and I allowed her access to the computer and she's looking at reports, she's looking at, you know, gate access and she's doing all, and, uh, you know, it's kind of, I just, uh, I didn't really know what I had. And then three months later I bought, uh, with Chris and, and Mike, we bought Tifton and there was a guy that we met, Thomas, and we hired him and I think none of us really took the reins too well early on and we were just like oh dude you got to clean some units and do some lock audits and we were real super cash about it and we got a super cash uh job from thomas um because we just didn't write down a detailed job description we didn't help him understand why all these things were important um we were running everything by text uh so if he texted and he would text Chris and I and like who's really responsible like we just totally messed it up yeah we just totally messed it up and it was months later before I actually I went to Tifton to run an auction and I sat down with Thomas and I was like here's what you need to do here's why you do it this is why this is important if I don't know these units are clean and I don't make them active we're turning down business you know and I just kind of ran through the whole thing with them uh but we were uh I mean, Terry was running 25,000 square for square feet for me in Hinesville, and we I bought that in October, and it was next October, and Gina's like, "Don't you need to go down there?" And I was like, "No, you know, why would I? I'll probably just mess something up." I mean, it, she was running everything really good. Um, I've I've only been once. We're about to sell it. It's been two years. I've been other than the two or three trips to fix everything. Well, we bought it in October and by December, I didn't go again until about six weeks ago. And the only reason I went then is because I had to drive right by it to go see Cooch's place in Jessup or I still wouldn't have gone back. 